But let's second, we're dealing with second Samuel chapter number 13. And I think it's very important to look at this because um, there is a spirit that is just running um, rampant. And when we begin to look at things uh, biblically and begin to look at things theologically, we have to understand that there are a whole lot of different things um, that's going on. Shalom to all the brothers and sisters that's tuning in. There's a lot of things that is going that are going on. Um, there are spirits that um, that if one hasn't fortified their spirit and one has not, um, if you try to do this thing without the Holy Spirit, you're going to have some problems. OK, um, you open yourself up to all types of situations. And the thing is, is that we start looking at the balance of things. Y'all know me. I'm a balanced brew. I believe in balance. Um, I don't believe that everyone has the truth. Uh, I believe that we know in part, and if we all come together with our part as the body should, then we can function as a body and Christ can give us an understanding of how the body is supposed to function. And so when we begin to look at these things, we get an understanding that um, there are spirits that don't have denominations. Listen, Hasatan is not a denominational entity or a denominational spirit. Okay, let's get that understood. Hasatan isn't just a Christian devil. Hasatan isn't just a Hebrew devil. Hasatan, it does he does not care, okay, who he has to possess. And so when we begin to look at these things, we have to understand that biblically, um, the perspective in which that they view things, they viewed it differently than what we view things when we start talking about in the Western, in the Western sense of things. Um, when things went down. They didn't view that as, oh, that's Hasatan doing that. No, they viewed those things from a different perspective. They, When it came down to Saul and the, the, the righteous spirit that left Saul and was replaced by a wicked spirit, they viewed that from the perspective of that. That was the most high doing that. All right. So they didn't have a demonology in what we would talk know in today where everything becomes a devil. OK, there were also things that men were held accountable for their actions. Um, when you start doing certain things, um, you could get put to death for that simply because of the fact that you did something. OK, that you knew better than to do. You couldn't blame a devil in biblical time for something and expect to get off. All right. So in today's time, we do that a lot. We blame Hasatan for different things. Oh, the devil made me do it. Oh, the devil this, oh, the devil that. In biblical times, in those days, in antiquity, they like, oh, you blaming the devil? Okay, I tell you what. Well, you the devil in you and you gonna die. All right, that's the way <laughs> that's the way they view things. All right, from that perspective. Now we have all these different things. Oh, the devil this and the devil that and the devil this and the devil that. We have to really understand how this thing is 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 structured and this thing is foundationally laid. Okay. When we start looking at 2 Samuel chapter number 13, let's look at this. All right. We're going to deal with the spirit of Amnon. Amnon spirit will get you killed. All right. The most I'm not playing that. His spirit will get you killed. Let's deal with Amnon. Let's deal with uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 13. And we're going to look at verse number one. All right. And it came to pass after this, that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed so vexed that he fell sick for his sister, Tamar, for she was a virgin. Okay, I want y'all to look at this. She was a virgin. She was beautiful and she was a virgin. All right. She was beautiful and she was a virgin. No man. And this, this, this ain't talking about, you know, what brothers love to try to twist. Talking about, oh, she was a young girl. That no, no, no. This sister was not. She didn't know a man. OK, she didn't know a man. All right. And Amnon uh, thought it hard for him to do anything to her. All right. Verse number three. And Amnon. OK. And Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. All right. Jonadab, the son of Shemhiah, David's brother. 
And Jonadab was a very subtle man. He was slick. Okay? He was slick. He was very subtle, slick, cunning. All right? Come up with all kind of ideas to be slick and conniving to get what he wants. Okay? That's when someone, something or someone is subtle, that's what it is. And oftentimes, things that are subtle, all right, such as serpents and things of that nature, they have the patience to wait to get their victim. Okay? They are patient. That's why when you see a lot of these pedophiles and a lot of brothers who rape sisters and, and, and things of that nature and rape women, you'll see that they plan. They're very subtle. They're patient. They aren't, they aren't um, 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 doing things just, just quickly. Okay? They're processing everything. Hey, hey blessings to you, Brother Michael. They're processing everything. They're watching. They're watching your actions. They're watching the steps that you're taking. They're watching your, the, the direction in which you go home every day. They're watching the time of time you get off at work. All right. They're watching what time you get to work. They're watching all of these things. Oh, well, do she want, you know, when we go out to lunch, do she, do, do she observe and pay attention to her cup? Or do she just leave her cup at the table and just walk over, go to the bathroom? All these things they're watching and they're subtle and they're plotting. Okay. But look at what it says right here in verse number four. And he said, why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? Listen to this. You finna tell a slick, subtle joker your sin, your wickedness that's on your heart. That's on your heart. See, oftentimes people who do things that are wicked, they have a conspirator. They have someone who conspired with them because they tell them what's the desires of their heart. And therefore, they, they, there's always somebody who's the mastermind at putting things together for them. OK, for putting things together for them. It's always that when you see somebody rob a bank, it's somebody who had the desire to rob the bank. But they weren't the mastermind at putting the plan of escape together to rob the bank. They had a plan. But yet they needed somebody else to orchestrate and put the plan together. They're always a great organizer when it comes down to doing something wicked. It's always a great organizer behind wickedness. Someone who can get the people who already have wicked intentions, who always who already have a wicked heart, but yet they just need someone to orchestrate and organize to help them succeed at accomplishing their wickedness. Okay? Let's keep reading here. Look what it says here. He says, verse number four, and he said unto him, why art thou being the king's son, lean from day to day, wilt thou not tell me? You ain't gonna tell me? You the king's son. Something on your mind. See, something's on your heart. What's wrong? You have to be careful with subtle people who come to you asking you what's wrong and you telling them your business, thinking that they have good intentions to help you, but they really being subtle to try to find out how they can get over on you or how to find out what maybe we may be able to partner together to accomplish something against a common person that we don't like. You have to be very careful how you open your mouth and you tell people Things that's on your heart because those things maybe the father would deal with later on and pull that and uproot that wicked heart out of you. But it's always someone who pushes you into your wickedness and helping you accomplish it. Look at what he says. He says, you the king's son. You the king's son. Lean from day to day. Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, the subtle wicked person that this dude was, I love Tamar. She's so fine. Now, this is sister. Think about this. His sister. I love Tamar. Man, she's so beautiful. She's so fine. I got to have her. There are dudes who look at you like that. They on your Facebook profile. 
looking at your pictures. Oh, man, that sister's so Oh, she's so bad. Man, look at that garment she got on. Man, look how that garment fit in her body. Oh, man, look at, man, every time she take a picture, man, she always showing her chest. Always, oh, man, she, man, that sister this. Oh, that sister that. And then they start inboxing you. They start inboxing. Hey, sister, how you doing? I just want to pray for you. Can I call you? I seen you going through a situation. This is why social media, you have to be careful with you putting your business on social media about what's going on in your household because there are people who are plotting and planning and subtle and waiting for the opportunity to slip in on you. You putting situations up that you got marital problems. It's some dude on Facebook, some woman on Facebook that is desiring to slip in on you. You don't even have to say that my husband, I'm having problems with my husband. Just all you, it's a certain kind of way you post to let people know what's going on in your household. And they watching. They've already been watching and desiring you from a distance. Now you're starting to feed that desire by simply telling them your business. By simply telling them your business. And Amnon runs his mouth. Oh man, my sister's so fine. Now this is David's son. This is David's son, y'all. He said, he said, you the king's son. You the king's son. But yet you are desiring your sister. First of all, here's the thing. Being the king's son who's David, who's righteous, you already know that within Israel, that's a no-no. Coveting, covetousness, covetousness, and lust is a no-no according to the Torah, and you know that was being pushed in Israel. But here's the king's son. See, just because you the king's son, just because you the preacher's daughter, just because you the bishop's son, that don't mean you living right. That don't mean you living right. That don't mean you have the desire to live right because you the bishop. In fact, in fact, many people will tell you that the preacher's kid is the worst one in the church. Those who close to the dog or those who close to the bishop. Some of the ones who, who the worst ones are the ones who, who everybody thinks supposed to know better. And them the ones is actually doing all the wickedness as are they doing so much wickedness you wouldn't even believe. Meanwhile, they you the king's son. You got an outer appearance of righteousness. This is the king's son. Amnon. He has the, the, the appearance. He know he can't walk around acting wicked and lustful. So he's desiring within his heart. See, this is why I tell people, are you talking about Christ destroyed the law? No, what Christ did was he even made it to even more strict. Because he goes from, if you desire it on your heart, if you desire it on your heart, you, no longer you just going to walk around, walk around and not showing people. You walk around fronting with an outer appearance of righteousness. Christ said, no, 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 no. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. We gonna, I'm going to elevate this thing. I ain't going to do away. I'm going to elevate. I'm going to elevate it. Now... If it's on your heart, you've already done it. You've already done it. If a man look at a woman and desires to have her in his heart, he has already committed wickedness. This is what Hamashiach said. He ain't do away with lust. He ain't do away with covetousness. He elevated it. Elevated it. Now look at what look what happened with Amnon. He said, I love Tamnar, Tamar, my brothers, Absalom's 
sister. Verse number five. And Jonadab said unto him, lay thee down on the bed. Let me tell you how to trap your sister. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Ain't no joker outside my house for to have me plotting on those that I call family. I ain't talking about blood family. I, it ain't just about blood family. If me and you and our kids play together and we we open up doors to you and we, we, we talk about we family, there is no joker outside of that will have me, especially if you've been good to me. David been good to these folks, man. Been good. Nobody on the outside. Nobody outside of what we call family. Not when it, Family is not associated with blood because there are people who are more your family spiritually than they are, than are your blood relatives. So this ain't about blood. But at the end of the day, nobody is going to have me plotting on you if I say you my brother, if I say you my sister. It's not going to happen. But that's only if you love the Most High. That's only if you have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. That's only if you know Christ and you fear the Most High. If you don't know him, if you ain't got the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, if you don't fear him, then you will do stuff like this. This will be your M.O. Because guess what? You are following your father, Hasatan. You are of your father, the devil. When you're doing stuff like that. Those who plot. See, abs, the Am Amnon spirit will get you killed. Amnon spirit is going to get you killed. Straight up. It's going to get you killed. Because you are co-conspiring with somebody else against the innocent. And when you co-conspire against so folks, now these brothers, they by themselves behind closed doors plotting. He said, I'm not, I'm going to tell you how to trap your own sister. And she not going to even see it coming. She not going to even see it coming. Look at what it says. He said, verse number five, lay thee down on the, on thy bed, Amnon. And make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat. He say, I'm not listen. This 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 right here. This is a subtle wicked plan. I'm gonna show you how Eve got lured by Hasatan in the garden. It's gonna be the same way. Go ahead. And play like you sick. Like you can't get out the bed. Go get in the bed. Play like you sick. And tell your father David to send your sister to take care of you. To take care of you. Look at what it says right here. It says, and dress the meat in my, in, dress, and dress the meat in my sight. That I may see it. Okay. And eat it at her hand. All them doggone maids in Israel. All these sisters that could have that could have came and took care of Amnon. He going to ask for his own sister. And who was the co-conspirator? Who was the master strategist? Who set up the plan for the deception? Jonadab. You let another brother who don't care nothing about your family, lure you in to plot against your own family. And you think the Most High gonna let you get away with that? You think the Most High gonna let you get away with that? You got another thing coming. You will get killed. You will get killed. You will get killed. Straight up. You'll get killed. It's not going to work. Look at what it says. Verse number, verse number six. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. 
He could have had an opportunity to say, I'm not going to do that. But he went through with it. He did it because his desire was so strong. Let's get into this. Covington. All right. Let's get it with covet, which we know that's a part of the law. All right. Uh, Strong's number H25. All right. Uh, 30. Kamad. Kamad. Okay. Kamad. To desire to ple uh, take pleasure in. Attracted. Desirable. Pleasing. Took great delight. Now let's deal with lust. H number, uh, uh, Hebrew number um, 5691. Inordinate love. Inordinate love. Okay. Inordinate love. And I read both of those definitions because sometimes people um, covet other people's spouses. And sometimes brothers and sisters lust after someone who don't have a spouse. Okay, so that's why I read both of those for you. Now, let's keep reading. Look what it says. It says here in. Uh, verse number six. And Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a cake and make a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar saying, go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother's Amnon house and he was laid down and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight. And did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out of all men from me. And they went out every man from him. So he said, Listen, all y'all men in here, I need y'all to leave. I need all y'all men to leave. Get out of here. Because the trap has been set. I need all y'all to leave. Get out of here. We done already set the trap. Now it's time to go. That's how people do you. People will come around you to set a trap. And then those who involve, they will all leave. Because the trap has been set. But the thing is, you have to understand one thing. That for every trap a devil lays. He falls in his own pit because the most high sees the trap before it's even plotted, before it even happens, before it's even orchestrated. And he always have a way of escape to the point to where those who set the trap will fall in it without any help. And nobody can help them and nobody can save them. Look at let's keep reading. Look what it says. It says in verse number 10, And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. I need you, I don't need you to bring it and put it on the on, on the nightstand. No, I'm too sick. I can't, I can't, I can't eat it myself. I need you to feed me. I need you to put your hand in my mouth. Because the whole point, I need you close enough to me to where I can snatch you. It's the same way to snap, same way you see snakes do. They lie and wait. They wait till their prey get close enough to where when they attack and strike, their prey can't get out of their grip. Look at what it says. Bring the meat, verse number 10, into the chamber that I may eat of thy hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber of to Amnon, her brother. And when he had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her. Look at that. He took hold of her 
This is the same thing the serpent does. You see anacondas and pythons and different snakes of that nature. You see them grab their victim, twist them up. That way to the point, once they get them in that twist and once they get, their, get the grips on them, they can't get out of it. Look at what it says. It's a verse number 11. He took hold of her and said unto her, come lie with me, my sister. Come on, let's have intercourse. I don't, he done kicked everybody out. He done laid the trap to what Jonah Dab told him and the trap seemed to work. Look at what it says. And she answered him, nay, my brother, do not force me for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Why? Because it's lust. It's wickedness. It's lustful. It's wicked. And she says, no, I will not participate in your wickedness. This is some of the same thing that brothers is doing now. I heard some brothers talking about, I can lay hands on a damsel and rape her and she my woman. That's so wicked. Then you got brothers getting mad at sisters because their sister won't date them. So they're just going to force them to date. They're going to take hold of them and force them to be their woman. When the Most High said that, you can't call yourself an Israelite and do nothing like that. She said, look, she says, no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. Verse 13, and I, and I withered, shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. You say, hold on. You want me? Even though I'm your sister, go tell the king that and see what the king say. You go tell David, the same David, your daddy, who put Bathsheba son or husband on the front line because he desired Bathsheba without consulting with the Most High. He didn't consult with the Most High. You are doing the same thing your father did in, in some ways. He saw that Bathsheba desired her. Didn't go talk to the father about it. He took it for himself and then turned around and going to kill her husband to cover up because she was pregnant. But the, again, you can't get away from the most high when wickedness is going on. You can get by for a time, but you can't get away. And so the most high in his wisdom, you know what he did? He said, I'm going to, in order for me to bring David down, because it's David, see, David thought, he probably, he might've thought that somebody in the town, if the most I would have sent a prophet from in town, then David would have said, oh, you seen what was going on. Somebody told you. No, the most high in his wisdom knows the hearts of men. He said, no, I'm going to send a prophet from outside the city that had no way he could know this unless the most high be with him. And what happened? When the prophet showed up, he tells David about this vision and this dream. And then David has the nurse say, well, who did that? He said, you, David. And all David could do was fall to his knees. Because he knew. There's no way this prophet could have knew what he had done. Because this prophet wasn't one who was hanging out in the city. And so the most high in his wisdom, he always has a way of proving to you that he see you. And if you want to think you slick, you want to plot, you want to pull some type of schemes, you want to do underhanded stuff, you want to do stuff behind the scenes, and you think that you getting away. Remember, Israel, the most high eyes is Roman. He never sleeps nor slumbers. He doesn't need eyes in the back of his head because he sees everything. You're not getting away. You're only getting by.
and getting by is a form of his grace to give you time for repentance. But the problem is Amnon didn't learn from the situation. He did the same thing David did. Desire. And she's telling him, if you desire me so much and you my brother, go talk to daddy and see what daddy do. But Amnon knew it was no way he could do that and expect David to co-sign that, especially the hell that David went through. He almost lost his throne pulling that foolishness. Pulling that type of foolishness, he almost lost his throne because he decided to put take things in his own hands because he wanted something that somebody else had, that something that wasn't given to him. And he was not going to go to the Most High because he probably knew that the Most High was probably going to say no. So he said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. See, you can't go out here doing things that you want to do when the Most High never co-signed you to do it. That's the problem. Everybody trying to do something that they see everybody else doing. But the problem is, if the Most High hasn't co-signed it, it's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for you. The Most High not with you is not going to work for you. It's not going to work for you. And then you fall in another danger. Now that you're doing stuff and you hurt people in the process, or you see lead people astray in the process, then the Most High going to deal with you. That's why you have to be processed to be a king. You have to be processed to be a leader. You just can't just jump out here. Because you're leading people. You're leading people. And you can lead people astray. And their blood will be on your hands. Their blood will be on your hands. Look at what it says right here. Verse number, uh, we're in 2 Samuel chapter number uh, four, uh, 13 verse number um, 14 how be it he how be it he would not hearken unto her voice so Amnon wasn't trying to hear what she's talking about but being stronger than her being th stronger than she forced her to and laid with her he forced her to have sex this is sister man his sister she begging him. But when you are wicked, when, you're, when, 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 when the spirit of wickedness is overtaking you, when sin has overtaken you and have corrupted your heart, you don't see and hear any of that. All you see and hear is doing what you want to do. No matter if you got to kill somebody in the process. No matter if you're going to hurt people in the process. You are desiring those things that you want, not caring about other people. This is all about you and what you want. And you'll hurt whoever in the process to get what you want. You'll deal with the casualties of it later because you're desiring so much to be, to be great and desiring so much to take and possess something to the point to where you'll do anything to get it. Lie, steal, kill, uh, bear false witness, create matters and situations just to, do, to, 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 to cause any type of destruction, just to get what you want. Because you're either coveting something else that someone has, or you're lusting after something that you want. Amnon, you got what you want. It's always a price to pay for taking something that was never supposed to be yours. Yeah, you got the goods. You got exactly what you want. But it's always a price to pay when you do something and take something that the Most High never co-signed you to have. He didn't put it in your hands. That's why you had to plot to get it. Because when it's the most high is doing and working in your life, 
You don't have to take nothing. You don't have to plot nothing. He puts things in your hands. Because why? Because he, he had already decided that he wanted it for you. You don't have to take nothing. You don't have to lie, steal, kill, or do any of those things. The most I put it right in your hand. Or he'll open up doors for you through people to get to where you're trying to go. To where he has desired for you to go and be. And when he knows that you're ready, he'll set up an organic situation for it to happen. The same thing with David. David out there taking water and bread to the to the to, to all the, the, the so-called warriors and, and fighters while Goliath out there. And what the most I do, he created an organic situation for David to use the slingshot and show his power and show that this is the chosen one. So while everybody using swords to fight. The most I use something else that's different that you, if you're not in tune to the spirit, you'll think it's something else. Henceforth, the reason why people are turning around and say, oh, boom, church looked like Christianity. It looks like it. Well, I guess the people when David had the slingshot, they didn't think that would work either. But they saw the fruit and the power behind it. They saw the fruit and the power behind it. Because it's not about the tool. It's what we're missing. It's the power and the anointing behind the thing. Everybody that was out there fighting had swords and shields. In fact, Saul tried to make David put on his armor and it wouldn't work. So the method and the tool and the things in which I will use Ain't going to work for you if it don't fit you. And I can't, I have to be wise enough to know that I can't put these tools on you because if you're not sized for that, then it's not going to fit you. So don't try to do what I do because I ain't trying to do what you're doing. It's not going to work for you. And just because it don't work for you, that don't mean, or just I'm not going to speak against it. I'm not going to speak against something that I see fruit in all because it don't fit me. That's another place you're going to get in trouble. When you speak against something that the most high is in. That's another thing. That's why we have to, we have to sharpen our spiritual eyes and, and get the ears of the learn and develop our spirit man to know that just because something looks strange to me, I need to say, Father, show me that you're in this. Show me that you're in it. All the folk out there, David, man, what you doing out here? Yo, that little slingshot ain't gonna work. You see Goliath? You see the sword? He got a sword and a shield. Saul ain't none of the other warriors that's bigger than you. These are master skillful warriors and you out here bringing a slingshot? That ain't going to work. That slingshot look like Christianity. That ain't going to work. We warriors over here. We need you to have a sword. No, you need a sword. I need a slingshot because the power behind the slingshot is greater than the sword. That's what you're missing. That's what people are missing. They read the story, they read the Bible, and they still don't get it. It's the power. That's why the most I say, I take the foolish things of the world that confound the wise. Because the wise use what they think is going to work. The most I say, I'm going to use something you think that can't work, and I'm going to show you how to make it work. And I'm going to show you that it will work. I'm going to show you that it will work. But let's keep reading here. Look what it says. We're in verse number uh, 15. It says, um, Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise and be gone. Arise and be gone. Look at what it said. He forced her to have sex with him. He forced her. Then not only after he forced her, he going to kick her out. 
that wicked devil. You done took her virginity and you done kicked her out. Knowing that if she ever marry a man and y'all know the patrol process, y'all know that the blood has to show on the sheet. The same thing that Mary had to go through or Miriam had to go through. Now this sister, now her hymen broke. By her own brother, now she damaged goods. Who's going to marry her? As beautiful as she is, who's going to marry her? Huh? After you done used and abused her, now you throw her out. Get out. Treat her like she's nothing. That's what Hasatan does to you. He will use you and abuse you and use you for his own good, then leave you out hanging. Then will leave you out hanging while everybody else was, is laughing at you because you decided, you thought that this was an angel of light, but it really was Hasatan parading himself around like an angel of light. If we can't recognize the elementary deception in people, there's no way y'all going to be able to deal with the son of perdition. There's no way that y'all ready to deal. You, we, we can't even recognize, we can't even recognize true leaders and teachers. We can't even recognize when somebody got a devil. We can't even recognize elementary things that Hasatan is doing. How in the world are we going to handle a devil in the flesh? How in the world are we going to handle Hasatan in the flesh? Man, so ain't going to be a whole lot of folk get deceived. A whole lot of folk going to fall off. You don't get deceived, man. You're going to be deceived, man. You ain't going to be able to recognize it. You, it's going to be so convincing. Just like folks are today. They so, I mean, folks seem so convincing. They seem so genuine and convincing. And yet the people just run. And they losing their mind. They following every. They running to and fro. They following, they following every voice. Every voice out here. They running to and fro. Following every voice. You ain't going to be able to recognize. No, come on, man. We, man, we, we better. We, we got to we, we gotta grow, man. We really got to grow. We really have to grow. The time up for playing games. You got to grow, man. You got to grow. You need to spend time. You need to spend more time praying than anything. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm telling you right now. You better spend more time praying on your knees to the most high to prepare you and to grow you spiritually and to fortify your spirit than to be dealing with all this other stuff you worried about. Then to deal with all the stuff you worry about. Instead of arguing over a calendar, you need to be talking to the Most High to prepare you to endure the perils. This is elementary stuff we're dealing with. And folks being deceived off elementary stuff. You can't deal with no full-blown Hasatan. Come on, man. Scripture says that in Scripture said in Matthew say it's gonna be so convincing that if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. If it was possible, but the most high has a way. He has a way of making sure that the elect won't get deceived, even though it's gonna be weary, even though it's gonna be so convincing to the point where you're like, hold on, man, look, I gotta put a spit. He gonna have to put a special. Uh, he gonna have to put a spirit on us to make sure, okay, to make sure that we don't get caught up. Man, we gonna be like he, he, he say. If anybody tell you he over there, don't believe it. I don't care what it look like. What's going on over there? I don't care. Don't believe it. And folk gonna be falling for it every time. Let's keep reading it. Let's finish up, y'all. Let's finish up. It says right here. Verse number 16, and she said unto him, there is no cause. This evil 
in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. She said, she said, this, this is, this is more, this is more wicked for you to send me away. Then you raping me. You know why? Because now I got to leave with the shame that I'm no longer a virgin. I have to live with the rest of my life with the, with the mindset that I probably won't ever have a husband. Because you sending me away. It's worse than you raping me. It's worse. I got to live within the community. Knowing that I may not have a family. I may have no children. I may have no husband. You sending me away like this is worse than you raping me. Verse number 17. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, put now this woman out from me and bolted the door after her. Listen to this. Listen to what he did. His, her own brother raped her. And after he finished doing what he wanted to her, she's a virgin. She's beautiful. He kicks her out of his house and locks the door. Locks the door behind her. Now she has to face a world. After being humiliated, after being shamed, and after one of the greatest gifts, her virginity has been taken from her. Now she got to go back into a world. Even though people don't know that she's been raped, she has to deal with the conscience on her mind. She can't even walk around being a true woman of Yah. She can't even walk around without people but I heard consciousness on her consciousness thinking that, do they know? Sometimes your mind is the, mo is the worst, is worse than any level of torment than anything anybody can do to you. Because your mind is thinking, do these people know? Every time someone laugh, you think that they talking about you being raped. Every time someone is whispering in someone's ear, you thinking, do they know that she can never have a husband? Every time when you see somebody pointing at you, you thinking in your mind, hey, do they, do they, or do they know that I would never be able to bear children or have children? She has to live in a world of a conscious that people ain't even talking about her. People not even thinking about her. People not even doing any of that. And yet she got to deal with it. And it wasn't by a stranger. It was her own brother. It was her own brother. Her own brother. Sometimes the closest people to you are the ones who will do you in. That's why you got to be careful. This is why it's so important to fast and pray and ask the most high and ask him to elevate your spiritual senses and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a keen spirit, a sensitive spirit to know that people who are around you to give you the alert that you're dealing with a devil. No matter what they say, no matter how they worship, 
no matter how they teach, no matter how, no matter how Carol seeming that they care so much about you. You have to make sure that the people that are in your presence and are around you. So this is the thing. When you mature in that place, the most high will begin to show you people that are around you. But here's the thing. A part of your maturation process, because the victory is his and the vengeance is his, not yours. You, he will tell you, don't you open your mouth. Neither would you, you treat them any different. That's when you get the ultimate victory. That's when you've overcome your even your flesh, where you don't even even treat people different, even though you know that they are backstabbing you. Not that they're going to, but they already are even in your midst. Even the same folk you talk to on the phone is talking about you and plotting on you. And yet the most I will reveal it to you. And you can't even treat them any different. He said, is it not I who chose you, chose you 12 and once amongst you is the devil? Judas was the devil, but he never treated Judas any different. And ultimately, Judas ended up hanging himself. See, that's what happens. When you let the most high fight your victories, fight for you. The glory will go to him. The glory will go to him and the, and, 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 and the news will come to you. That joker hung yourself. You will hear about the same person that plotted on you. You will hear about them hanging themselves. Meanwhile, you ain't treated no deal. You still loved on them. Even though you knew that they were going to do it to you or attempt to, or try to. The most I has a way of letting the news circulate and come back to you. And here's the thing. Even when you, even when the person that plot on you hang themselves, you still don't rejoice because of their death. In fact, you mourn for them. And you pray and you ask the father to restore them. Because your response to a person's fall is always key to the most high. It's always key. It's always key. Pray that the father restore them. Don't rejoice when they hang themselves. But trust me, you will hear about the hanging. Let's, let's get it. Let's, let's, let's finish up here. Look what it says. Verse number 18. And she had a garment of divers colors upon her. For with ro such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel. Look at that. She dressed like a virgin. So the people knew who the virgins were. It was a certain garment that they wore. So people know, don't touch her. Hey, she a virgin. She's not with a husband. She don't have a husband. It says that were virgins apparel. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. Verse 19, and Tamar put ashes upon her head and rent her garment of divers color. She ripped her garment off. She ripped her garment off. I can't wear this garment because I've been touched. I'm no longer no one can rejoice. I cannot rejoice. No one can look at me. It's too shameful for me to wear these colors to signify that I'm a virgin when I have my virginity has been taken forcibly. It says that, and Tamar put ashes on. She rent her clothes, her garment of diverse colors that was on her 
and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon, thy brother, been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. So Absalom said, hold on. There's still a level of order that has to take place. Even though he's done this wickedness, there's still a level of order. Don't blast out his, your business in the streets. And this is the problem. You have people out here who say that they're in the truth, but they run their mouth like a faucet, blasting everybody business that's going on. And Absalom had enough character and had enough uh, understanding just because this wickedness was done, that don't mean you go telling everybody. That don't mean you go running your mouth. We're going to handle this thing in decency and in order. But you got everybody running their doggone mouth when they want to hear about something. Somebody messed around and cheated on somebody. And here you go. You got to go run your mouth and tell everybody. Somebody in the money, done, somebody in the church done stole some money. You got to run and tell somebody. Hey, the pastor done got caught doing this. You got to go run and tell somebody. Just go run your mouth about everything. You out of order. And the most high going to deal with those who run their mouth. Because it still brings a level of shame to his name because people say they represent him. So guess what? The outside community, <coughs> the outside community, they're going to say, see them? <clears throat> They're going to say, see them? Look at that. That's why I don't follow that God they serve anyway. That's why I don't follow that God they serve anyway. See, you bring shame to the most high name even when somebody has done wrong. Why? Because they are a representation. They've declared they're a man or woman of Yah. And yet they are de they have declared it to the public. And now when they fall, you go run in your mouth and it brings shame to the most high name. He's going to deal with you for running your mouth. Yes, it was wrong, but you don't have the authority to run your mouth. You out of order. And that's the problem. Don't nobody want no order in Israel, but everybody want to run their mouth and everybody want to give orders. But don't nobody understand orders. Don't nobody understand order, but they want to run their mouth out of order by everything going on in somebody else's house. You're going to get dealt with. You're going to get dealt with. You are going to get dealt with. You can bank on that. Absalom say, hold on, sister. He said, verse 20, and Absalom uh, Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace. Don't say nothing. We don't need the people knowing our business that's going on in our house. We don't need to know. And that ain't talking about just your house in your immediate family house with your wife and kids. That's talking about the whole house of Israel. We don't need people knowing what's going on because this, if the public find out that your brother Amnon have raped you, the whole Israel, how's Israel? It's going to be up in an uproar. It's going to be chaos. Chaos. But look at what it says right here. In verse 20, he says, now hold that. You say, hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. You still have to respect the brotherly covenant. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon. Neither, look, 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 look at what he did. He went to his brother. 
He went to his brother about it. He didn't go to Joe Blow, who don't know nothing about the issue. He didn't go to the dude who was standing, the, the people that was in the room with Amnon that he sent out the house, that sent out the door. He didn't go to the dude that put the locks on the door after he kicked, uh, uh, kicked, kicked uh, uh, the, uh, the sister out, as he kicked Tamar out. No, what did Absalom do? He did what was supposed to do in order. He went to his brother who committed the situation, committed the, committed the sin. He didn't go to Joe Blow or anybody else around him to gossip about what was going on, that what happened. No, he went directly to the source. But Israel, y'all can't do that. But y'all keep culture. But y'all keep Torah. But y'all all about Israel. But yet, you go to everybody else about other folks' business. No. You're out of order. You're out of order and not worthy of leading anybody because you don't know how to handle and deal with things in decency and in order. The most high is still about order. I don't care what pastor such and such do. You ain't got no business going to run your mouth about what's going on with that. You go to the man or you go to the most high. But folk want to run their mouth. Don't understand protocol and order. The most high is an order about things. But folks want to lead. You keep them talking. You're all about culture. And yet Absalom went straight to his brother. He didn't allow it to go beyond his brother and his father. That's how you handle business, Israel. That's how you handle the most highest business. It's a certain level of order that must take place. Let's, let's read what it says. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. He didn't hate his brother without a cause. You got a whole lot of y'all folks hate your brother for nothing. Oh, I don't like the way he do this. I don't like the way she do that. I don't like the way she wear her head wrapped. I don't like the way he do this. I don't like that he going there. I don't like the way he doing ministry in this. I don't like the way he doing this. Y'all, y'all, y'all have a pro for without a cause. That ain't a cause to be to not like somebody because you don't like the what they way they do certain things because uh, they wear this type of color, where they wear this type of hair wrap. No, he went to his brother. He was mad at his brother as all get out because he transgressed the law. That's what he was mad about. If you're going to be mad about something, if you're going to be go, not like somebody about something, or you got an issue with somebody about something, have an issue with them breaking Torah. Not because you don't like the way he wear his shoes. He, oh, oh man, he tie his shoes too tight. So I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like that he pick that he eat with his left hand and he should be eating with his right hand. All oh, this old kind of craziness. Just a bunch of madness, man. He come on live at 12 o'clock. I don't like because he come on live at 12. Everybody else come on at 2 o'clock. All oh, this kind of stuff. This is the stuff that I'm talking about that's going on. Without a cause. That ain't no cause not to like somebody. Oh, they pray with their hands up. We pray with our hands down. And we, no, see, see, now I can't. That ain't that ain't right. That don't have nothing to do with Torah. This, this, this stuff is crazy. I mean, they got a drummer. They got a good top player. They got a keyboard player. Ah, nah, nah, man, I can't get out of that, man. That just, ah, nah, man. That just, it just, it just does something. Man, that ain't got nothing to do with no Torah, man. It don't have nothing to do with Torah. If you don't like, okay, just say that ain't your thing. But don't try to act like it's a Torah violation. Man, stop this stuff. That's without a cause. You're going to get dealt with. I'm telling you, you're going to get dealt with. Let's keep reading. Look what it says. It says right here. In verse number 23, and it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had shepherd, uh, sheep shearers in 
Balahazor, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, now thy servant have sheep shearers. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all go, now go, lest we be charged, chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, how be it, he would not go, but blessed him. Then Absalom, if not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom said, had commanded his servants saying, mark ye now when, Ab, when Amnon's heart is very, is merry with wine. Look at this. You read what you sow. The same way you plotted on your sister. Guess what? Two years later. See, that's what, I, that's what I'm talking about. See, the most high. See, we be, we be, we be thinking that the most high got to move in three months after something. No, the most, he, he's a strategist. He will plot and make, it's just like your parents. When you done did something in school and the teacher call or the school call and you be done did something. Sometimes your parents don't spank your behind when you get home. Sometimes they will wait two, three days later to catch you coming out the shower. You done forgot about it. You think you done got it. You think you done got away. I told you, you're not getting away. You're just getting by. For two years, Amnon got by. For two years, Amnon got by. He raped his sister Tamar. All this stuff. He got by for two years. But guess what happened? He had to pay. It came right back around him. The same way he conspired against his sister. Guess what? You reap what you sow. The same thing that you sow, you best believe it's going to come right back around. I told you, you're not getting away. You're only getting by. You better be careful the traps that you set because you may fall in them. You better be careful. Two years ain't a long time for the most high. It's a long time. We think, of it, man, it's two years. No more, you don't forget about me. You don't forget. It's 10 years. We start calculating. 10 years is five years. I know you say you're going to do this, but you ain't did it yet. You not, are, do you, are you ever going to deliver? Are you ever going to do this? Are you ever going to do that? And we sitting around here. We start bringing indictments against the most high. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I'm going to try to make something happen. And that's when you fall into danger. You're trying to make something happen. Because you think you think you complaining is going to speed up his time to do what he already planning to do. He don't we he, he does not speed up his time for you complainers. In fact, murmurers and complainers don't go into the promised land. I'm telling you straight up right now. You want to murmur and complain about what the most high ain't doing. He ain't moving fast enough. And you go out here and try to make something happen. Let's see if he co-sign what you're doing. He ain't moving. He gonna let you catch hell with what you created. And then after you done got tired enough hitting your head against the brick wall, then he gonna say, you gonna have to find yourself waiting on him anyway. Period. Waiting on him anyway. Okay? But look what it says right here. Look what Absalom do. In verse number 28. Now Absalom had commanded his servants saying, mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. We gonna wait till Amnon get drunk. We gonna wait till Amnon get drunk. Look what it says. And when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. Look at that. You plotted on your sister. Now your brother. Plotting on you. See, the one, see, you plotted on the one, or you plotted on your brother because you thought your brother wasn't going to find out. But guess what the most high do? He'll use someone close to you to plot on you. That's how it works. You think you're getting away. You're just getting by. 
You always got to pay up, man. It always come with a price when you don't do it the way of the most high. When you don't do it his way, you always got to pay up. Don't let Amnon get you killed, y'all. Don't let the Amnon spirit get you killed. Point blank, period. Now, here's another thing. Nobody blamed David for it. I want y'all to pay attention to this. See, this is another thing we do. We love to blame the leader for the wickedness somebody else did. Oh, it's the pastor fault. It's the pastor fault. Ain't nobody blamed David for what Amnon did to his sister. David, ain't anybody blame David. You know why? Because people understand that there's a level of accountability that individuals have to put, have to partake in. That there's a level of accountability that individuals must 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 pay up on. Didn't nobody say David was? Well, you know, David, if you had been doing this, or uh, Amnon wouldn't have did that. No, it don't matter. You could put all types of things and protocols in place. People who are wicked, they gonna want to be with. You can have wicked members. All day long, you can have all types of things in place and somebody, if it's in their heart to be wicked, they're going to do it. That don't mean it's the pastor fault. That don't mean it's the moray fault. You can't blame him for that. That's the same way like your kids. You at work working two jobs. You got a teenager that's 17 years old at home doing God knows what. The government want to blame you. See, we say we not Bab we, we 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 say we out of Babylon, but we conduct ourselves like Babylon. Babylon blamed the parents and the parents working two jobs to make ends meet. Y'all blame the moray and the pastor for something that somebody else did. You just like Babylon. You ain't out the box, you just moved to another corner of the box. That's all you did. 